Hi there, my name is April Slatel and welcome to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is just showing you a super fast way to make a baby quilt. This really takes no time at all. All I've got for this project is I've got some fabric here. It's 45 inches wide and it's already, it already came this way. So it's a very soft, like minky, a bumpy minky, and it's got flannel. It's so, so soft. And I bought this because I got a really good sale on it when I got it. And so I bought quite a bit of it. I figured it would make some really quick come together quilts when you just need something, you know, fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of these out of this. And for the back, this will be the top. And for the back, I've just got this very bumpy minky. Um, this comes very wide. This comes in 60 inches wide. This one comes in 45 inches wide. So that will come together really quickly. You can just buy a fabric that's already all sewn together like this. So all you're gonna need is some fabric. I've got some clips here, because I will be clipping um, as we go at the, on the edges. I'm gonna be doing this quilt inside out when I go to put it together I'm just going to sew around the whole outside I'll show you that as we go so that's going to make it super easy I've got a measuring tape here just to keep me so I you know how can see how big I'm going to be at here because I'm working with some long fabric so it's just easier for me to use this as a guide I've got my rotary cutter and I've also got a ruler here you're also going to want a pin cushion. You're going to want your clips and probably a pin cushion as well and a pair of scissors. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my fabric. I'm going to go, I want to go the whole width of what this fabric is. So it's 45 wide. I'm going to go 45 wide and I'm going to go, the bottom fabric I have is so super wide. So I'll probably go about 40. It's a 60 inch soft uh, bumpy minky here and um, I'm going to go about 40 long so it's going to be about a 40 by 45 it's going to be a pretty big baby blanket so what you want to do is you just want to lay these down now you're going to lay your minky face up and you're going to just make sure it's nice and flat and then you're going to lay your top fabric face down and you're going to lay that nice and flat so because I have two extremely stretchy fabrics here I might just put a couple of safety pins in as well, just to hold this in place. A little bit more security. This fabric's going to shift all a uh, really a lot. So, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of an allowance because I don't mind trimming this up after. I'd rather have too much than be short when I get to the bottom. And that can happen with this minky. All right, and I'm gonna just stick a couple of more safety pins. So it's just as if I'm quilting it, you know, on a, when you normally sandwich it. Every time I've ever worked with Minky, I just don't like to go right edge to edge. I just can't seem to, I lose it somewhere in between. So by doing it this way and allowing myself to have this little bit of an allowance here, I can, I can be off, you know, it won't matter. It's still going to give me enough to make up for it. Okay, and then just slide it up on your table. If you don't have a big table, just slide it over the other side and just keep working your way up, pushing it upward. And then just make sure you're good and flat with both pieces, the top and the bottom. So look under to make sure that... That bottom piece is still laying flat. I've actually had quite a few different um, fabrics over the years where they came, where I bought them like that, where they were like a finished look. It really is fun because it's quick. Super quick. And I always find these good deals on the on like a minky back end. So I've made a lot of baby quilts with it. I am using a lot of these pins after all. I just decided this is holding it in place a lot better than the clips or pins. So 
Well, I've got all my pins in it now, so I'm just going to continue to put my little clips on here. And again, remember I'm not, it's already like moved so much, so it's not going to be perfectly, um, you know, straight edges here. And that's okay because what's going to happen, I'm going to trim that off. So on this particular fabric, there's a seam here. I'm going to stay on the inside of this seam. I'm going to lay my presser foot and I'm going to follow that seam all the way around. If you're doing this and your fabric doesn't have that seam, I would honestly just sew about a half an inch all the way around. No, for sure, knowing that you're grabbing all of your minky side. Okay. Now on my, in my case, I have left some overhang because I'm going to trim this down after. So I know I'm going to catch it all. Okay. I'll see you at the sewing machine. Okay. So now what I've done is I'm at my Juki sewing machine and I'm going to get started, but I want to be sure I leave an opening. I'm going to start here. Here's where I'm going to start and here's where I'm going to stop. So I've decided to put two clips at each point. That way I know to start and to stop. This one's going to be able to handle these seams really well. There's lots of seams because it's a already made patchwork. And it's minky. It's flannel. I've got bumpy minky on the back. So it's there's a lot to go for the sewing machine to go through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my presser foot in. This fabric has a serge line all the way around the fabric. So I want to put my presser foot to the left of the serge line. And I got my presser foot toe just, you know, going to follow that line. I know my minky fabric. I've done it a little bit bigger than what, what, um, than cutting it out exact. That way I'm sure to stay on my minky and not lose it underneath. And that way it goes all the way around. I'm going to go really slow for this because I don't, I've got to make sure I don't lose this stretchy minky. When I come to the end, I'm going to pivot and turn. I'm coming right back down to the point where I started. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a back stitch. Lift my presser foot, pull my clips out, and what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to clip off some of this excess pink. I'll do that all the way around. And I'm just going to use scissors for this. The only place I want to be careful is when I get to the uh, point where I started and where I stopped sewing, I don't want to clip that excess off yet. I would rather waste a little bit of fabric than be off on my um, minky. I'm going to trim this piece here down because I need that when I turn this right side out. I need, I'm going to need it to sew that seam to finish it on the outside. Okay, now I'm going to pull this inside out. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to clip my corners off. I'm not going to cut into my seam. I'm just going to clip the corners and get rid of that little bit of bulk. Now I'm just going to go to the inside. I'm going to open up that hole and I'm going to just go down, reach for the corner and I'm going to pull all four corners out. I'm just going to go ahead and poke all the corners out here, following the seam all the way with my hand so it's all pushed out all the way around. Be sure all your corners are sewn so you don't have any little holes at the edges. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take where my hole was and I'm going to put those together. I'm going to pull this till they meet up. And I'm going to stick some pins in here. I'm going to stick quite a few. I'm going through both of the fabrics. 
I could, normally I would want to press this, but with this minky, it's really not going to hold its form. So I'm just going to stick a bunch of pins in there to hold that together so I can uh, seal that hole up. So that's what I've got so far. I'm even going to go in between those holes. You may have to really maneuver this when you're doing this. You might get find that you've got some bunches here. You might just need to play around with it. Like put the pin halfway and then just kind of like keep stretching it out till you get that to lay flat. As flat as can be anyway. You can see I've got these little bumps here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pins in between and hopefully I'll be able to get rid of those. I might even stick a couple of more in between those. The Minky is very, very stretchy. All right, so I've got a ton of pins in here. And that's what the back's gonna look like. This little piece here, I've got to try to maneuver that. So I'm gonna stick one more little pin in there. I just can't get it to lay super flat. I'm just going to line my presser foot here at about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pull my pins as I go and I'm going to just seal this hole up right now. I'm going to take my pins out as I go and I'm going to give it one little back stitch there. Okay, and I'm going to take the pins out as I go. I'm going to go pretty slow. There's quite a lot of fabric here. Remember this minky's like kind of folded over too. So I'm going through a lot of layers. Right here, this is gonna be really thick. I can feel that. I just wanna go slow. Be sure to pull the pins out. There, I think I'm at the edge. I'm using white Orful thread for this. I've got it in the top and in the bobbin. When I was um, doing the back side, I just used some old vintage thread that I had. My rule is if I tug on my old vintage thread and it doesn't break, I'll use it for anything that I'm doing that's not really being shown. And all I'm doing is I'm just going around with a quarter inch seam all the way around and I am pulling the uh, white fabric, I'll call it the top, the white top fabric, I'm making sure that that and the pink fabric are in line, that I don't have a lot hanging over this way. And I'm just sewing that down. I'll do it for a little ways and then I'm just going to realign myself again. And I'll hold it to as far as I've, um, you know, pulled it out. So really all I'm doing is I'm just bringing the seam right to the edge. A lot of times you would just iron this before you get ready to top stitch it. But what the problem is, is this may be so stretchy it's not going to stay in line anyway. So it's just as easy for me to pull this out as I go and just go really slow. And I might need to tweak this and, you know, manipulate my fabric a little bit to not let that bottom fabric come through. And you're going to want to go slow over those seams because there's so many of them. If you're using the same sort of fabric I am. An already made patchwork quilt fabric. Um, if you find that your points here didn't get pulled all the way through like this one did not, just grab your tweezers and pull it from the front here. That'll be fine. A couple of them I didn't get all the way, the point all the way pulled out. So just do it as you're going. You'll notice it as you're sewing. So just do it then if you need to. Okay. And when you come to the edge, stop about a quarter of an inch. So when you pivot and turn, you are... At your quarter of an inch, your foot's still lined up. Pull that back fabric. Make sure your seam is on your edge here. 
Just might need a little maneuver in. Going through a lot of seams on some of these. So you want to go pretty slow. Where the inside seam is, you might be hitting that. So there might be, you know, quite a few layers. As well as the seams that were already in the top, um, the top of the quilt. That that was all pieced and already had all the seams. As long as you go slow, you should be all right. On this machine, it has a fast and a slow, and there's lots of times I'll set it to fast, and <laughs> I shouldn't. I really lose control, because it goes fast. I've got it set to a little less than medium right now, so no matter how much my foot pushes down on that pedal, it's only going to go to about medium speed. Because I am like a speedy Gonzalez. I just like to do things very quickly like that, so... This machine's great for me. As long as I remember to set it. <laughs> Usually when I forget to set it, it's because I'll get going and then I'm starting to do a lot of mess ups. And then I look down and I'm like, oh, that's why I'm going way too fast. Okay. So I'm gonna, I feel a lot of seams here at this edge right here where all these uh, fabrics are meeting up. I'm gonna go slow. Come to my quarter of an inch and pivot. I'm just holding the quilt in my lap so it takes the pressure off as well. So you don't have it like given any drag. Okay, now I'm coming right back to where I started. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a back stitch. A couple of good back stitches right there. my gold top all finished it came out about 34 by 44 it is so super soft it was super super fast my little granddaughter is just going to absolutely love it i am not going to i'm not going to quilt this at all i'm just going to leave it just like this and she is just going to love it i'm going to give this a wash a dry and i will get this all ready to deliver i also made these little 20 by 20 blankets. You can use this technique with any size. These are just nice and soft little snugglies that they can the babies can snuggle up with. If you want to make a really super fast quilt, just buy the fabric that's already looks like it's been it's all pieced together and you can whip one of these up in no time at all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Remember to keep it simple. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye.